Good evening, this is Viewpoint. I'm Zakhar Jacob. Former Supreme Court Judge Indu Malhotra has rekindled a very important debate. Should temples be controlled by state governments or should it be left to individual patrons and temple management committees to run the affairs of individual temples across the country? Now, some of the biggest temples in the country, from Tirupati to Shabrimala to Vaishno Devi, they are all controlled either directly or indirectly, certainly, through management committees, through state governments who have representatives on that management committee. Now, a good chunk of the earnings that these temples make go to the state coffers as well. Now, the state's case is that it is this money that which then pays for the upkeep of not just the popular temples, but tens of thousands of not-so-popular temples across various states. Is there a case to be made to free up temples from state control? Or is this a fallacious debate as many politicians, whether they are from left-leaning parties or right-leaning parties, seem to indicate? But first, the story of how retired Justice Indu Malhotra rekindled this very important debate. That's what happens with these communist governments. They want to just take over because of the revenue. Former Supreme Court Judge Justice Indhu Malhotra sparking a storm. How can you, you know, exclude them? Speaking outside the Sri Padmanabha Swami Temple in Tiruvanandapuram, she appears to have alluded to the 2020 Supreme Court verdict. She and current Chief Justice of India, Justice UU Lalit, were both part of the bench that upheld the rights of the Travancore royal family to manage the temple. That's what happens with these communist governments. They want to just take over because of the revenue. Their problem is the revenue. All over they've taken over. All over. Only Hindu temples. So Justice Lalit and I said, no, we'll not allow it. They had set aside a Kerala High Court ruling that allowed the state government to take control of Padmanabha Swami Temple. The High Court had held that the ruler of Travancore, who was trusted to manage the temple, was the last king of Travancore, Sri Chitira Tirunal Balarama Varma. But the High Court said after Varma died in 1991, the state should be considered the ruler of Travancore. But the SC bench affirmed the mandate of the erstwhile ruling family of Travancore to continue its involvement in the management of the temple. It is not the policy of the communists to took over the temple uh, to capture its income or utilize its income. And communists wants to protect the temples and to protect the believers. And if any temple is took over by communists, it goes to the administration under the Devasam board. The Sri Padmanabha Swami temple is considered to be one of the richest temples in the country with valuables worth around 1 lakh crores in its chambers. But despite that, the temple faced a financial crunch and the state government had to bail it out with soft loans. So should temples be under state control or should they be freed? All right, before we go to our guests, I want to bring you up to speed with some of the wealthiest temples in India which happen to be under state control, either directly through these uh, various boards and departments, the HRNC departments, or indirectly through temple management committees. First, of course, the Tirupati Tirumala Devasthanam, which is the biggest temple in terms of revenue in the country. It gets annual earnings to the tune of 3,000 crores as of 21-22. Uh, the Tirupati Temple is managed by the uh, Board of Trustees. Ultimately, it is controlled by the state of Andhra Pradesh, the state government of Andhra Pradesh. It had revenues in excess of 3,000 crores. A good chunk of it, almost a quarter of it, goes uh, to the state's kitty. In Kerala, the Shabrimala Temple, uh, it has an annual revenue as of 2021-22, an annual revenue of 150 crores. Uh, it is managed by the Travancore Devaswam Board, which is in fact a state government entity. There's also a Devaswam minister who's a minister in the government of Kerala and ultimately the control of that board and eventually uh, through the board of the temple is with the Kerala government. The Shirdi Sai Baba Temple in Shirdi in Maharashtra, again, one of the most popular temples in the country. It uh, had earnings in 21-22 of 600 crore rupees from its devotees. It is managed by a board of trustees who ultimately uh, are answerable to the Maharashtra state government. In fact, the Maharashtra state government has a bunch of representatives, its own chosen people on the board of trustees of the Shirdi Sai Baba Temple. 
and of course Vaishno Devi Temple in Jammu. Our total revenues it had in 21-22 was 500 crore rupees. Again, this temple too is managed by the Shrine Board and it is ultimately controlled by the local administration of Jammu and Kashmir, uh, the Union Territory, uh, which of course comes under the Lieutenant Governor. So clearly, uh, all of these temples with thousands of crores in earnings are being managed, like I said, either directly through these boards or through temple management committees indirectly and ultimately the control is with state government. So is there a case to be made to free these temples from state control? Dushan Sridhar is a Vedic speaker and writer. He's joining us on the broadcast this evening. Vivek Srivastav, political analyst and left-leaning commentator. Sumansi Raman uh, is a political analyst joining us. Uh, and KJ Alphonse uh, is a leader of the BJP and former union minister. Uh, let me start with uh, Vivek Srivastav.